just to kind of begin, uh, there were originally with Sinovimate three studies, two double-blind uh, placebo-controlled trials, the CO13 and CO17, and then there was the CO21 uh, safety and pharmacokinetic study. Uh, and with this study, there were 1,347 patients that were originally studied both in the U.S. and, and uh, across the world. Uh, and out of that, they were originally looking to see if there were any cases of, of DRESS, drug reaction eosinophilia systemic symptoms. Uh, it turned out that there were no cases of DRESS out of that 1,347 patients. However, it was not set up originally as an efficacy study. So we did a post hoc analysis uh, looking at, at the sites in the United States who had, had uh, entered 11 or more patients who entered and, and took Sinobamate. And of those, there were 12 sites, 10 were eligible uh, because they, they were able to participate and had, had good data. And so there were 240 patients in this post hoc analysis. When we looked at this post hoc analysis, and there have been a number of studies from this post hoc analysis, we were looking at seizure subtypes. In other words, those that were uh, for focal, uh, Sinopamate is approved for focal epilepsy which would include focal to bilateral tonic-clonic seizures, focal uh, unaware seizures, and focal aware seizures. When we looked, there were three types of, of patients, obviously, and we looked to see what was the efficacy of each of the types. There had already been a study uh, published uh, with Dr. Uh, Michael Sperling from Thomas Jefferson Hospital being the first author from the, the 10 sites, published back in Epilepsy in 2000. 21. And there we had shown some very good efficacy uh, across the board, actually, of the 240 patients. There had been 25% uh, of those patients were seizure-free at the last visit for uh, 12 months or more, and uh, actually averaged approximately uh, 23 months seizure-free. But then we wanted to see the individual seizure subtypes. The seizure subtypes, uh, what we found was that, that First of all, those that were focal to bilateral tonic-clonic came under control the quickest. And that's extremely important because of the fact that, that uh, patients with generalized tonic-clonic seizures, whether they're, they're focal to bilateral tonic-clonic or uh, primary GTC, uh, have uh, a greater propensity, unfortunately, to sudden death in epilepsy, SUDEP. And so it's extremely important to try to get those under control first and also because those have the most injuries uh, to the patient. So what we found was that in the first three months uh, of the study, when we were titrating up, the patients already had a 94% median percent seizure reduction in terms of their, their seizures focal to bilateral tonic-clonic. The focal aware and focal unaware were in the 52 to 54% range, which was also very good, but even higher at 94% at for the focal to bilateral tonic-clonic. We looked in three-month intervals. By the next interval, uh, which uh, they were all three-month intervals, except the next one was a two-month interval just due to the uh, timing of when the patients uh, came into the, to the clinic. But in the, the next one, uh, they, the, the focal aware and focal unaware had essentially caught up almost to the, the uh, focal uh, to bilateral tonic-clonic seizures. Now, what was also interesting, we looked up to 27 months down the line. So three months uh, of the titration, then another 24 months afterwards. And the results were, were excellent across, across the board. Patients were having, uh, in terms of the focal to bilateral uh, tonic-clonic seizures, as well as the focal aware and focal unaware, we were talking numbers uh, close to 100% medium percent uh, uh, reduction in seizures at uh, going out 27 months. So it was not only that we got control early, but it was sustained along the way. When we looked, even just looked at first, for example, 50% responder rates, uh, the numbers there were in the uh, were 69% in that first three months for the bilateral, uh, focal to bilateral tonic-clonic. Uh, the numbers were in the, in, the, in the low 50s in terms of, of the focal aware and focal unaware. By the time we were talking at the end, and it actually by, th 
by three months, it was, uh, they had caught up. Uh, the numbers were, were again, uh, quite good. When we're looking at the, at the, the end, uh, at the 27 months, we're talking 80 to 95 percent in a three-month interval, uh, we're having greater than 50 percent reduction. When we looked at the 100 percent reduction, as early as those first three months, we were seeing uh, 50 percent uh, 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 showing the 100 percent reduction in that first three months for the focal to bilateral tonic clonics, and in the low 20s for for the this is a 100 percent seizure reduction in that first three months. Then when we get out uh, uh, to the end, we're talking numbers that are about in the last three months. 90% in terms of the 100% seizure reduction for the focal to bilateral tonic clonic and numbers in the, in the 50% plus in terms of the focal aware and focal unaware. So in other words, we're getting control early and it's being sustained. What was also interesting, because this had been shown already in Dr. Sperling's article where he had shown that 48% had a, a 50% reduction in their seizures in the first two to four weeks. And we were looking three month intervals. And so this was all uh, consistent with the previous data. And again, the most important part was that the patients with focal to bilateral tonic clonic seizures were having the most significant and earliest reduction. And again, hopefully that, can, uh, that makes for less injuries, hopefully a reduction in, in uh, SUDEP, sudden death in epilepsy, and, and bodes well for patients in terms of, of control.